what is in my android so android is a most popular term from the last couple of years right so can i know what is in my android so tell me what are the answer you know android is what basically i'll get this answer from the majority of the people android is a mobile operating system and it is what android is a mobile operating system basically i will get this answer from the majority of the people it's a mobile operating system but you know to say frankly android is not an operating system I mean it's not only an operating system okay so first i'll try to i'll try to explain what exactly android okay what is the correct definition for the android okay so in my view in my view the definition for this android is nothing but android is a mobile platform android is what android is a mobile platform this mobile platform consists android is a mobile platform consists consists operating system middleware and key applications android is a mobile platform consists operating system common middleware and key applications and key applications this is the definition of android android is a mobile platform consists operating system middleware and key applications this is the definition of android okay so first i'll try to justify this definition i mean what what is mobile what is operating system okay so what is middleware and what are the key applications so first i'll try to justify my answer okay what is this android okay so if you take any electronic device in the market if you take any electronic device if you take a computer or if you take any electronic device basically the device contains two components if you take any electronic device if you take a computer or if you take a tv if you take <coughs> if you take any electronic device basically the device contains two components now the two components are nothing but one is the software component and second thing is the hardware component software component and hardware component these are the two components for example if you write my requirement is i want to write i'm writing some java code i'm writing i'm writing a java code which is used to print some data in a printer which is used to print some data in a printer we are writing the software code we are writing by using the java programming language it directly this java code directly will not communicate with the hardware components meaning this your java code directly cannot communicate with the printer component directly so basically the abstraction between these two components the abstraction between the software component and the hardware component is nothing but abstraction between the software component and the hardware component is nothing but what operating system is abstraction between the software component and the hardware component operating system is what operating system is abstraction between the software component and the hardware component so if you take any electronic device so basically we required we required what to provide a communication between software and hardware component so we required an operating system we required okay so now here operating system is abstraction between the software component as well as what hardware component now in android what is the operating system we use or before going to discuss that why we need an operating system in the why we need an operating system this is the question why we are installing this windows mac different operating systems we are using right what is the purpose of installing the operating system to act as a middleware between hardware and software yeah. okay good so basically uh, i'll tell you for example if you want to store some data if you want to store in your computer there is a component called hard disk component right if you want to store some data there is a hardware component called hard disk but are you directly interacting with the hard disk hard disk hard disk store this data or i want to get the data from you from so directly we are not interacting with the hard disk right even we cannot communicate also directly with the hardware with the hard disk so with whom we are communicating we are communicating to the operating system we are communicating that operating system is going to communicate with what with the 
hard disk it is communicating so basically it's an abstraction between the software component i mean the hardware components and the software component so one of the responsibility of operating system why we are, why you need this operating system because one of the responsibility of operating system is nothing but memory management so memory management is one of the responsibility of operating system so to manage the memory to manage the memory so we required what an operating system is required so this is one responsibility memory management next resource management see at a time at a time we can perform multiple operations we can perform at a time the second responsibility is what resource management at a time we can perform multiple operations we can perform at a time see uh, i open paint i open i'm performing the some operations on paint i'm performing as well as the back end xcode is open as well as emulator is open next go to meet is running parallelly so at a time multiple operations we can perform at a time multiple operations you can perform what at a time because of this resource management in operating system meaning the operating system is going to allocate some resources some resources for typing a text document some resources for paint some resources for go to meeting some resources for some x y z okay so uh, because of this operating system only because of this operating system resource management at a time we can perform multiple operations we can perform at a time okay next the next responsibility of operating system is memory management resource management driver management is another responsibility driver management so driver management means for example uh, if we take the latest operating systems separately we don't need to install any audio drivers I mean by default from and windows 2007 onwards by default with the operating system itself you will get some audio drivers audio drivers will get explicitly you need to download any drivers and for example directly will connect keyboard will connect for example you know printer is on hardware component as well as keyboard is also on hardware component but directly you can connect the keyboard you can connect and directly you can start working with the keyboard but the same thing you cannot do with the printer printer you cannot printer you can connect but directly you cannot start working with your printer if you want to work with the printer additionally you have to install the drivers you have to install for that particular printer correct or not so here uh, this driver management I mean driver management will by the operating system driver management will provide some built in drivers so for for example for keyboard for mouse for the pen drive so by default with the operating system itself you'll get some drivers you'll get okay another responsibility of operating system is nothing but power management is another responsibility power management is another responsibility of operating system best example in my system it is showing the power status here see here it is showing the power status so 88% of the power is remaining in 22% 22% is 22% is completed meaning how it is who is giving this information to you operating system is giving that information okay because one of the responsibility of operating system is nothing but what power management is another responsibility of operating system so if you take android mobile if you take android mobile when the android mobile is also contains this software component as well as hardware component so definitely we need an definitely we need an operating system definitely we need an operating system in the android devices the operating system in android devices is nothing but linux is the operating system in android devices what is the operating system in android devices linux is the operating system in android devices okay but my question is here you know if you inst if you if you install the linux operating system if you install in your computer how much of space it will take in computer it will take 4 gb of space it will take in your computer to install the linux operating system approximately minimum it will take a 3 to 4 gb of space it will take to install the linux operating system but here i am telling here in android in android we are using the linux operating system we are using was linux to install the linux operating system we need 4 gb of space we required but even in the market there are few android devices which is having the storage capacity is 1 gb even in the 1 gb storage devices also this android platform is available so how it's possible in case of your computer required 4 gb of space is required but in case of the android in the market there are few devices which is having the storage capacity is 5 to 11 mb 1 gb 1 gb storage device also available 
Even in that device also, Android platform is running. Even the storage capacity is 1 GB. After installing the operating system, still you will get 300 to 400 MB of space. Still it's available in the in your device, 1 GB storage, 1 GB storage devices. The reason is nothing but here. Okay, uh, the Linux operating system will take 3 to 4 GB of space. It will take, okay, fine. But in mobile, Linux is mainly designed for the computer. It's not for the mobile phone. Mainly it is designed for the computer. It's not for the mobile phone. And we don't require, we don't require all the Linux functionalities we don't require in the mobile phone. For example, by default, uh, the Linux operating system is providing some drivers for printer. We don't require it because the user will not connect a printer to your into your mobile okay and here lot of lot of responsibilities are not required in case of mobile we required the few few response mean few operations we required from the linux okay that's why we don't require the entire linux we don't require we require the few operations we required from the linux operating system so the technical term here uh, there is a term called kernel is a term called what kernel kernel is termed as a kernel means a part of operating system kernel means what a part of operating system is called as what kernel a part of operating system is called as what kernel so here android is working on linux kernel meaning boss we don't require the entire linux we don't require we need few rest few operations we require from the linux operating system that's why we termed as what Linux kernel. So in few places, I found this answer. Android is a Linux based operating system. Android is a Linux based operating system. Even that is also not correct. Okay. So, but internally, internally in Android. So Android is working on what Linux kernel. Okay. This is the first component. Next, we'll discuss a software component. We'll discuss. I mean, for, for developing the Android applications, for building a software or for building an application basically we require a programming language we require if you want to build any application or a software we require what the programming language is required so now here if you want to develop android applications if you want to develop so what is the programming language is required if you want to develop android applications if you want to develop let's see what are the pro what are the programming languages are required so what are the programming languages we use for developing the Android applications? Go, go Java, uh, XML. Programming languages. XML is not a programming language. Yeah, Go Java and uh, HTML and C plus plus, Java and .NET. Okay. So these are the three programming languages are available for developing the applications. These are the three programming languages. You can use C, C++, Java or .NET. You can use any one of these three programming languages you can use for developing the applications. Okay. So if you are developing the applications using Java programming language, let's see, just give me a second. Android applications. So these are the three programming languages, possible programming languages. So here, officially, officially Android is giving the support for C, C++ and Java. Officially Android is giving the support for what? C, C++ and Java. Android is giving the support for these two programming languages. Android is giving the support. Android is not giving any support for developing the applications using what? .NET. So we'll discuss uh, how to build the applications using .NET. But officially Android is giving the support for so these two programming languages, Android is giving the support, C, C++ and Java. So if you are, if you want to develop the applications using C and C++, if you want to develop the applications using C and C++, Android is providing some supporting tools and libraries as NDK. NDK is termed as Native Development Kit. NDK is termed as what? Native Development Kit. And if you are developing the applications using Java programming language, we require some supporting tools and libraries android is providing the supporting tools and libraries as sdk 
okay if you are developing the applications using c and c plus plus it is providing i mean android is providing some supporting tools and libraries as ndk sdk for java native development kit native development kit and software development kit okay out of these two things c and c c c plus plus and java majority of the people prefer to write the code using java only because we know that java is object or java is a object oriented programming and it's easy to write the code because we don't have a stupid concept like pointers okay and we are having a ready made library support like io package and util package so so a lot of library support is also there in case of uh, java programming language and it's having its own features like scalability a platform independent and all so because of this majority of the people in the market because even though android is giving the support for these two things majority of the people is preferred to write the code using what java programming language majority of the people are prefer to write the code using java programming language okay that's why initially android is giving the support for these two things c c++ and java now android is is not giving the support for c c++ because 99% of the nine people are prefer to write the code using java only unnecessarily they are spending some time for building for building all the components and all by using c and c++ that's why initially android is giving the support for c c++ but now officially android is giving the support only for what only for java it is giving the support okay okay we discussed c and java we discussed what about the dot net officially android is not providing any support for developing the applications using dot net framework officially android is not providing any support for developing the applications using what dot net there is a third party framework called mono android it's not officially from android there is a third party framework called mono android is a third party framework and recently there is one more framework called xamarin so mono android or xamarin so by using this mono android or xamarin I meant the same framework initially it is termed as mono android recently they renamed to xamarin okay by using this mono android or xamarin framework we can develop the applications using dot net programming language you can develop the applications but there are a few limitations are there drawbacks are there one is the first thing is see it's not officially from android it's a third party framework it is one one third party company it is it's not officially from android the first thing is if you want to use this mono android or xamarin first thing is it is commercial we have to pay the money we have to pay to use this to use this one first thing is what it's a commercial is a first first disadvantage next second thing is nothing but trust see with a huge amount of investment a 5 crores of investment i am developing one project i am developing I'm developing one project so after developing the project we are developing the project by using this third party framework we are using see i have some secure data for example i am developing a application for a healthcare client there, there is some secure data is there so how can we provide that that secure data how can we give to a third party third party company framework okay so trust is in, trust third thing is nothing but support okay was you started for example you are you are a very good dot net programmer you decided to use this mono android or xamarin by purchasing the software you started working with this uh, 50% of the project is completed then after that you got a requirement you got a requirement and you don't know how to do that one you don't know how to do that one so definitely we had to take the support of whom definitely we had to take a support of this mono android people or the people who are aware of this mono android that people support you had to take tell me how many people are aware of this mono android framework in the market in the world hardly can count with fingers you can count how many people are aware of this mono android so again you had to go and you had to ask to xamarin people or mono android people boss this is the my this is my problem at that time they they will tell you boss we will provide you the support for this but it's a paid support meaning even for support also you had to pay the money you had to pay okay support is most important before going to start any project and the last thing is nothing but updates we know that how fast 
how fastly android is growing day by day we are getting updates we are getting for example 5.0 6.0 now the latest one is android n how fastly we are getting the updates right so the latest features whatever the features are available in the latest android versions immediately you will not get those features in this third party framework because they built a framework on top of android sdk they built a framework on top of what android sdk so the latest features of android you will not get in this mono android framework okay because of all these disadvantages because of all these disadvantages the people will never prefer to the people will never prefer to use this mono android or xamarin kind of frameworks because later you have to face a lot of issues you have to face now the best option for developing the android applications is what java is the best option for developing the android applications it's no need to pay any money it's a free of cost you can trust and third thing is support there are n number of people are there i mean the android forums are there if you have any requirement the people will help you okay and if you android is releasing any updates means first you will get in the java sdk you will get okay so up this about the software component we'll develop the android applications by using java programming language but java is not in the not only the option there are other things also there you can develop by using c c plus plus and dot net also next <clears throat> if you are developing the applications using java programming language if you are developing the applications using java programming language definitely we had to import some java libraries we had to import if you are developing the applications using java programming language we had to import what java libraries we had to import if you are developing the applications using java programming language so we had to import java libraries we had to import we know that for example if you are performing any io operations if you are performing if you are performing any io operations we required this java.io package we required if you are performing any network operations if you are performing java dot java dot io dot star java dot net dot star okay java dot util dot star like if you are performing any <clears throat> if you are using the java libraries if you are using i mean if you are writing the code using java programming language definitely we require the java libraries we required next <clears throat> everything is not possible with the java programming language i mean why use the term because everything is not possible with what with the java programming language why i am telling this statement because for example let's take operating system by using which programming language the operating system is developed i mean your windows windows linux and all these operating systems by using which programming language this operating systems systems are developed i heard in the market uh, these operating systems are developed by using c and c++ reason is nothing but why they developed the operating system in c and c++ why not in java .net because operating system what is the main responsibility of operating system interacting with the hardware components interacting with the hardware components that is a responsibility of operating system but if you want to interact with the hardware components that is not possible with java programming language from your java code directly you cannot communicate with the hardware components you cannot communicate from your java code that's why even though if you are writing the code using java programming language sometimes sometimes your java code will get a requirement of communicating with the hardware components but that hardware communication is not possible with what java programming language so that's why the java code is going to take a support of native libraries the java code is going to take a support of what native libraries that native libraries is called as and we, we call as c and c++ sometimes you'll get a requirement of what communicating with the hardware components from your java code but this communication is not possible by using your java programming language so that's why the java code is going to take a support of what native libraries native libraries means which are written in mac which are written in c and c++ i mean it's a non java code it's a non non java code okay so interacting with the hardware components is not possible with java programming language so that's why the java code is going to take a support of c and c++ libraries support for communicating with what 
for communicating with the hardware components. For communicating with the hardware components, your Java code is going to take a support of a non-Java code or in C or C++ library support it will take. Okay. So one of the best example, one of the best example for this native libraries is nothing but OpenGL ES is, is on native library. One of the best example for this native libraries is nothing but OpenGL ES, e, Open ES is on native library for displaying the graphics and animations in Android. In Android, if you want to display any graphics, if you want to display in Android, if you want to display any graphics, if you want to display in Android, so we require this native library we require called OpenGL ES, Open Graphic Library. It's not a Java library, it's a C, C++ library for displaying the graphics. Whenever you have a requirement of displaying the graphics, your Java code is going to take a support of this OpenGL ES for communicating with the hardware components. Okay. This is the libraries part, Java libraries and native libraries. The next important component here, the next important component in the architecture is nothing but application framework. Application framework is a, another major component in the architecture. Application application framework. So what the application framework will do is application framework provides infrastructures for the application developer. Application framework provides what? Infrastructures for application developer. Meaning how it is providing the infrastructures is with the help of ready-made libraries. Application framework is providing what? Infrastructures for the application developer. How it is providing the infrastructures is with the help of ready-made libraries. For example, your requirement is you want to work with Wi-Fi. You want to work with what? Wi-Fi. So you don't need to write the huge amount of logic you don't need to write for working with Wi-Fi. Because it's there is a ready-made library in Android. Because if your requirement is communicating with Wi-Fi, use a class called Wi-Fi Manager. So get the Wi-Fi devices, connect to a particular Wi-Fi network. What is the signal strength? What is the frequency? So all this information you can get. Meaning, you don't need to write the lot of logic or low-level logic is not required because it's a ready-made library in Android, just use the ready-made library in your application. So what the application framework will do? Application framework, application framework provides what? Infrastructures for the application developer. Application framework provides infrastructures Application framework provides what? Infrastructures for the application developer with the help of ready-made libraries. With the help of what? Ready-made libraries. Application framework provides infrastructures for the application developer with the help of ready-made libraries. Everything is ready-made library was. For example, if you want to work with Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi manager, Bluetooth manager, sensor manager, surface manager. Okay, next. Like everything is ready-made libraries. As a developer, as a developer, you have to know how to use that ready-made library in your application. That is your responsibility. I'll repeat once again. Everything is ready-made library. Okay. As a developer, you'll get a requirement of you'll just you have to know how to use that ready-made library in your application okay that is your responsibility okay because of this application framework you know one advantage in the android development is nothing but writing the code is simple compared to other programming languages how it is simple how it is easier because this application framework because you need to write the huge amount of logic you need to require you need to require you need to write some, some complex logic also you need to require because someone is already taken care of that one they are giving us ready-made libraries as a developer, just you have to know how to use those ready-made libraries in your application. Okay. And the next important component, the next important component in this Android is nothing but DVM. The next important component is what? DVM. So DVM is termed as Dalvik Virtual Machine. The next important component is what? DVM. So this DVM is termed as what? Dalvik Virtual Machine.
this DVM is termed as Dalvik virtual machine. Okay, so meaning, I hope you are aware of this JVM. I hope you are aware of what JVM. So what is in the JVM? JVM is termed as Java virtual machine. Okay, I'll tell you the flow I'll tell you. Basically, we'll write the dot Java file we'll write, right? We'll write the dot Java file we'll write. Next, what we'll do? We'll submit this Java code, we'll submit to JDK. I mean, one of the tool in JDK is nothing but Java C is one of the tool in JDK. We'll write the code in Java, we'll write the code. Next, we'll submit this Java code to JDK, we'll submit, okay? So one of the tool in JDK is nothing but what? Java C is one of the tool in JDK. Java C is one of the tool in JDK. But JDK is going to compile your Java code. JDK is going to compile your Java code. It is going to produce a dot class file it will produce. It will produce what? Dot class file. We termed as Java byte code. We termed as what? Java byte code. To execute this Java byte code, to execute this Java byte code, I mean dot class file, we required JVM is required. Okay. Basically, this is a flow. I mean, to convert your to convert the Java bytecode into machine understandable format, we require the JVM is required. This is a flow, right? In this way, your Java file will execute. Here also, here also we are writing the code using Java programming language only we are using. Here also we are writing the code using what? Java only we are using. Next, we'll submit the Java code to JDK. We'll submit in Java compiler. We'll submit the Java code to JDK will compile. JDK is going to compile your Java code and it is going to produce what? It will produce a dot class file which it will produce. The same process up to this. Up to this is what? The same process. Next, this Java byte code, we will not submit to JVM. This JVM is replaced with what? With a DVM. We'll submit the dot class file, we'll submit to what? To DVM, we'll submit. Will submit. So here my question is why DVM? Why not JVM? Because we are writing the code here also we are writing the code using Java only, right? Here also we are writing the code using Java. Even in case of your computer also we'll write the code using Java. Right? So why DVM? Why not JVM? Reason is nothing but JVM is specially designed for the computers which will work on the heavy power memory and the RAM capacity, RAM. But if you take mobile, mobile is not having that much power capacity, memory capacity and the RAM capacity. Correct or not? Mobile is not having what? That much power, memory and RAM. Best example was, if you take your computer, how much power, how much power computer will take as input? Around 220 volts of power it will take as input. But if you take mobile, Hardly 12 volts or 12 volts, maybe it will take as the input. Okay, so that's why they customize the JVM. They customize the JVM. I mean, DVM means I'm not telling it's completely a new one. They customized, they customized the JVM. I mean, they modified the JVM to work on the low power, low memory, and the low RAM. That customized JVM is nothing but what? DVM. Okay, so here DVM also will take Java bytecode only as input, but DVM will not directly will not execute the Java bytecode, it will not execute directly. First, what DVM will do is DVM will convert this Java bytecode into its own understandable format. GVM, DVM directly will not execute the Java bytecode, it will not execute directly. First, it is going to convert into its own bytecode format called .dex. First, DVM will convert into its own bytecode format called what? Dot DX it will convert. DVM will convert into its own bytecode format called dot DX. Then it will execute the dot DX file, it will execute. First, DVM will convert into its own bytecode format called dot DX. Then it will execute the dot DX file, it will execute. Okay. For example, in case of your JVM, uh, in your project, imagine there are, imagine there are a thousand classes are there. What JVM will do is, JVM will execute all the thousand classes independently. Independently, it is going to execute all the thousand classes. But here, it's not like that. 
what dvm will do is dvm will convert all the dot class files into a single file called 1d.dx meaning you cannot find the multiple dot dx files you cannot find for your project in for your entire project only one dot dxe file only okay so it will convert into dot dx file then it will execute the dot dx file it will execute okay this is a component dvm also will take what java bytecode will take as input but first directly it will not execute the java bytecode it will not execute directly first it will convert into what its own bytecode format called dot dx so i'll draw here so which will take the input as what dot class file it will take the input of dot class file it will take as input and directly it will not execute the dot class file it will not execute directly first it will convert into its own bytecode format called dot dx file it will convert first it will convert into what its own bytecode format called dot dx convert into its own bytecode format called dot dx then it will execute the dot dx file it will execute then it will execute the dot dx file it will execute okay so this is the architecture of android this whole diagram this whole diagram is nothing is shows the architecture of what android now if you see here if you see in this architecture just give me a minute i'll remove all these unnecessary things yeah. so this is the architecture of android this whole diagram will shows the architecture of what android now in this architecture in this architecture if you see here if you recall what is the definition of android what is the definition of android again android is a mobile platform consist operating system middleware and key applications this is the definition of android consist of what operating system middleware and key applications this is the definition of android if you see here in this architecture what is operating system in android devices linux kernel is the operating system in android devices linux kernel is the operating system in android devices okay next the application framework and libraries part and your dvm is called as a middleware application framework libraries part dvm is called as what it's a middleware application framework libraries part and dvm is called as what it's a middleware and by default with android you will get some built-in apps you will get by default with android you'll get so what some built-in apps you'll get by default with android okay this is the definition and architecture of android if someone will ask what is android means so don't give a stupid answer like it's operating system okay i mean if you are especially if you are a student if you are looking for a job if anyone asks android means draw this complete architecture so they'll get some time to explain for you okay so draw this complete architecture and define the definition with the, with the help of android architecture was this is the android architecture and from this architecture this is called as operating system this is called as a middleware and these are the apps this is the definition and architecture of android so do you have any queries in this and now the definition of android is i'm removing this mobile i'm removing in the definition of android i removed that android is a mobile platform because earlier earlier when the android is launched that is only specific to mobile devices it is only specific to what mobile devices but now if you take in the market android is available in the mobile devices tablets wearable devices okay next automobiles another great thing is in automobiles so in different platforms and it is available one is in mobiles tablets wearable devices desktops automobiles okay so in six platforms in six platforms android is available okay that's why i removed that mobile i removed now android is a platform consist of operating system middleware and and 
key applications. This is the definition and architecture of Android. So let me know if you have any queries.